you all for coming here. Uh, my name is Penny Wright, and we're delighted this evening to have the second visit from a woman who some of you know and some of you do not know, named Betsy Horn, whose book just impressed me when I read it. And she came the first time to talk about her book, A Little Touch of Cancer, and how it made me well. And we liked what she had to say so much that we have invited her back to talk about, to offer some suggestions about how we can incorporate some of the lessons she learned through her illness and beyond into our own lives. So I'll tell you a few things about Stetsy for those of you who don't know her. Um, <clears throat> she is originally from Connecticut, went to schools in New York and Switzerland. Um, at the time, the world of women was exploding. Um, she created corporate art collections, then joined the advertising and fashion staff at Harvard, Harper's Bazaar magazine, and ended up at Sotheby's in the paintings department. After her marriage, she moved to London, where she lived for 25 years and raised her daughters. And during this time, she worked for British Vogue and for other publications as a photographer. She did location finding for Town & Country magazine, as well as worked in the advertising department of that publication. Returning to the United States in a new marriage, she began to study acting, working with two legends. See, she's had, she's had many lives here. Stella Adler uh, and Robert Lewis and Earl Hyman, father of the Cosby Show. Over these years of study, a cabaret scene act developed as the result of which was many gigs in nightclubs and private venues, either as a solo act or with other performers. Diagnosed in 2001, and she'll talk about this a little bit more, quite a bit more, with an aggressive form of ovarian cancer, Betsy was treated successfully at the Yale University Hospital, undergoing conventional treatments. In the aftermath of these treatments, and with the realization that she wanted to make serious changes in her approach to both her physical and emotional health, she opted to try a new model of health care known as biological medicine, an approach that treats the whole person, strengthening and detoxing the body to identify the root causes of problems, not simply looking to remove obvious symptoms. So, she's been in good health, and I think I'll let her tell you a little bit about what she's been up to since that time. Um, but she continues to be an advocate for seniors and for proactive, joyful living. Please welcome Betsy Horn. Thank you very much, Penny. That's a tremendous build-up. Let's hope I can live up to it. Um, am I too loud? Or no. Perfect? No, it's perfect. Okay, so thank you very much for coming. It's lovely to have you here. I see some buddies here, and I thank them for coming also, and some, some new friends. Um, I'd like to thank Penny Wright for honoring me with this second visit. And um, after tonight, uh, which I've been working on this speech a lot, I'm going to really do my best to get a library card. I originally thought that you needed to climb the outside of the Trump Tower or something comparable, but I realized with a couple of um, utility bills um, and an ID, you can get a library card. And then I'm going to rifle the shelves for the new mysteries because my next project um, is going to be writing a series of mysteries which involve uh, a woman of a certain age who lives between Southampton and Florida, who's a bit like Miss Marple, and um, solves these mysteries that happen in Southampton and Florida. So you might find yourself in a book if you're not careful. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you. I'm the graceful aging a mammoth, mammoth subject with lots of interconnecting aspects. And so I'm going to try and pull together as many pieces I can about mind, body, spirit, and attitude, and how they affect our ability to age gracefully in today's world. And it ain't easy. However, there is great news about aging. For example, the Mayo Clinic states that if you feel like you're 50, 
and think you're 50, you are 50, no matter what age um, it is. And that is, you can stay 50 because our genes dictate only one third of our longevity. So two thirds, 66% is based on the choices that we make about diet, exercise, and how we think. So obviously hereditary conditions, I, I fully understand, um, and we're not talking about that. We're talking about the choices that we have. Groucho Marx said, live long enough and you'll get old. Well, that's true, but we want to get young as we get old and stay vibrant, healthy, and happy. The poet Dylan Thomas said, rage against the dying light. Well, research says that making even the smallest effort at any age in diet, balance, and strengthening can have a real and beneficial effect on the length and quality of your life. So we need to rage against the light because it's going to continue to burn. It's not going to die. It will burn brighter. So why am I here? <clears throat> I'm not a doctor. But I feel qualified to give this talk for several reasons. Fifteen years ago, as Penny said, on the eve of my 60th birthday, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. It arrived as a big shock because I was divorced and I thought that I'd made a lot of changes and that things were going pretty well. That was my reality. The truth was somewhat more complex than that. Um, if you want to know, you're very welcome to read my book that I have given the library. I've two copies, but I'm also selling them at a knockdown price of $11 <laughs> after this talk. Uh, the diagnosis coincided with the birth of my first grandchild. I decided right away that I was going to beat this thing and get better and healthier than ever so I could fulfill my granny duties and enjoy my life. Uh, to the fullest, whatever was going to be left of it. In recent years, I've become an advocate for seniors, a life coach, and a speaker on health, wellness, and beauty for women over 50. I have been treated, researched, studied, talked to physicians and therapists in exercise and alternative medicine, as well as conventional allopathic medicine, and learned a lot through all of it. I've since devised my own combination of things I do to stay healthy that work for me. In 2013, I became Miss Senior Florida and went on to the Miss Senior America pageant in Atlantic City where I was a finalist. Well, there were gracefully aging women from all over the USA. It was a blast. We were all over 60, some were 70 or 80, one was blind, and the oldest was 91, a World War II vet, and she could do all the routines that we had to, uh, all the steps of the dance routine we had to learn to open the show. I am often asked, were there bathing suits? P.S. Over 60, no bathing suits. The bathing suit for the over 60s is a long evening dress that hits the floor, and many have sleeves. Bling is the big, big thing. <laughs> So I've had time to think about this and what graceful aging came to mean to me. Was it just about looks? No. The senior state queens, they were not all beautiful. They were not tens. It wasn't a Trump uh, pageant. Uh, many were fives or fours or eights. But uh, was, it, was it about achievement or fame? No. No, everyone, though, had interests, they'd done things, they'd had businesses, they worked. Was it about success? Yes. I decided that it was, to some extent, graceful aging is about a kind of success. There's a look to it that's visible from the outside, which reflects, really, what is on the inside. To me, it's someone who's visibly comfortable in his or her own skin. It's attainable to all. And I believe it requires a good attitude, gratitude, and an ability to love and forgive. Mm -hmm. It speaks to someone who has successfully, in my view, accepted and internalized all the complicated, disparate, complex information from their personal life, loves, losses, and experiences, and they accept where they are right now, today. So he or she may still get stuck, may still be working on things, 
but they still use their life force, their energy, and their will to give their best, to have an appreciation of the day, most likely a sense of humor and irony, and the ability to laugh at oneself. One ingredient that I believe keeps it all going is to have someone or something to love. It's what we all need, whether it's a person, a passion, a pet, an organization, something higher or other than ourselves, which gives meaning and fulfillment to our life. That, to me, <coughs> is graceful aging. Now, to me, the body, the person, is divided into, I'm going to take this at two levels and talk about the inner self a little bit because the inner self is where it all comes from. To me, there are four elements. We have our mental self, our emotional self, our spiritual self, and our social self. Well, at a certain age, we've hopefully gained mental stability and worked through the old issues of maybe anger, resentment, family issues, although I have to say that upbringing in childhood does impact our adult lives uh, for good and for not so good. Uh, personally, I had to go back and clear up some family stuff, stuff in my 60s that I haven't realized I was still angry about. Equally, we know our emotional self, hopefully, our temperament, the trouble areas that may still need work, you know, getting pissed off or uh, losing it occasionally. Um, we know about that. We know the conflicts that may arise and as yet are not fully resolved. It's very important what I learned through biological medicine to realize that unresolved conflicts, emotional conflicts, can cause serious inner stress <coughs> on our tissues and on our organs. And so the more you can do to resolve, come on in, Lee. Thanks for coming. Um, the better our life will be. As far as the spiritual and social selves, many of us have connection already to a higher power, have practices such as meditation or mindfulness, and we work to stay present and wick off tension and life's irritations with yoga, tai chi, qigong, or some other uh, combination of activities. We need those. Socially, we need our friends and family or a group or higher power. Uh, the community like Southampton, those things, uh, there's a lot going on that one can join and be a part of. I know that sometimes people feel more depressed in the winter in a town that's very much a summer community, but I know that there are still things going on so we can find ways to stay valuable and connected. And this helps us create the happy hormones that reduce stress. Uh, the stress hormones such as cortisol, which are really very bad for us and keep us awake, they strain our hearts, um, and so forth. So working on it at a certain age, all these things should be easier because we know ourselves better. And um, to me, the most important quality that we have gained through being a senior or an elder is wisdom. It's golden. We now know things. We do, and we have... We, we know what the world is about. We've had many experiences. So uh, I think we know a lot more than those little millennials that are running around. <laughs> and we should revel in that. And even if our kids don't want to know what we know, sometimes our grandkids and others do. So my advice is speak up and don't be afraid to say it. We all have wisdom and information to impart. So, aging. We're going to age. It's evolution. We don't have a choice. We have a choice how we do it. Aging is a dynamic process. We are aging and changing all the time. You go to the dentist, your blood pressure is a little higher. Your temperature changes throughout the day. This dynamic process revolves around our cells. Our cells. Birth birth of cells, cell division, and cell death. It happens in utero. Mother Nature sees some cells that she doesn't like in a forming baby. She, she dies and she kills them off and gets rid of it. As we age, the cell division process slows down and there is more potential for a mistake in cell division or damage or DNA. We are nothing more 
then a great big battery that needs self-charging. And we have to do it. We can't plug ourselves in like we do our iPhone. We have to do it ourselves. And every cell in our body not only has a mitochondria, maybe you know about this. Do you all know about mitochondria and telomeres? Well, every cell in your body has an engine. It's called a mitochondria. And every cell in your body, except for cancer cells, and this is why they're called immortal, every other cell has something called a telomere, which is a tail on the end of the cell. And every time that cell divides, the tail gets shorter until finally there's no more tail and the cell dies. Well, the good news is that research is showing that through proper diet and exercise, we can extend the length of those telomeres and the cells continue to divide and we stay healthy. That is for the first time. They've just discovered that. So our fuel bill, if you will, is our grocery and water bill because that's our energy and what we do to recharge in the way of exercise. So I want you to keep that in mind, that that's what we are. We have cells, trillions of them, and we can keep them healthy. So, okay, as we go along, we know we're aging. The eyesight goes, we've got to hold the paper out close. Uh, the hearing goes, I have my hearing aids in, I love them, I got them last year, it really, really helps. Um, we lose muscle strength, that's a huge, that's a biggie. That's called sarcopenia. And when we lose muscle uh, cells and strength, we gain fat cells instead. And the good news is that you can get back your muscle strength. It's work, you gotta go to the gym, you have to do weights, you have to do exercising, but it can be done. And that, if you have muscle loss, you're losing core strength, and you have a greater chance of falling. Nobody wants to do that. I certainly don't. So also our metabolism slows down. The absorption of nutrients lessens. We are less aware of thirst. We don't sleep as well as we did, and so forth. So those are the real indications of aging, but we can still feel like 50 or 40 or 20, and many of us do. I know I do. Um, but it just takes awareness that these are important issues and we ought to be aware of changes. And when there are changes in how you feel, you should see your doctor. Now, I know that things like hearing aids are expensive and dentistry is expensive. And my only suggestion is that um, if one doesn't have good, I don't think there is a good dental insurance for some of these things that happen, like crowns and stuff. I have heard, although I haven't researched it, that you can go to a medical school, a dental school, and be a person that gets free treatment. Now, these may not be finished dentists, but they will be overseen if some of this, because I just am having a, um, an implant in Florida. It's $4,000. You know, you have the endodontist take the tooth out, that's $1,200, and so forth. So, uh, some of these issues are big and expensive, and we have to find out ways to deal with them a little better. Is 70 the new 40? We'll talk about that later. I have a very strong opinion about that. So we just talked about the inner self. If there are internal realities, there are external ones too. That's the physical the parts that really show. But we have to bear in mind that the internal self and the external self are totally interconnected. Those cells, those trillions of cells, are always connecting uh, and talking to different systems, different organs, and we have to be aware of that. So we want to look and feel good for as long as possible by staving off what scares us. What scares us? Well, we're not talking about dying here. I'm going to do that. We want to talk about that. But full heart attacks, strokes, cancer and things like the metabolic syndrome, which is a combination of various of these things. There are different types of people who want to talk about aging. You've got the person who has the resources, financial and time, to do whatever it takes to work out, get massages, go to therapy, resolve their conflicts, do all of that stuff, and they do it. 
where the people who have the resources that don't want to do anything except have the benefit of all those things, and they have no more problems with getting it done. Then there are the people who have medium resources and medium energy and do the best they can, which is what we're all doing. And then you have people who are still working and don't have the time or the money to do all of these things, but they, I have to say there are resources, there's a ton of stuff that you can do and find out about online to, as far as fitness is concerned, and um, how to stay, stay healthy. I've given a list of websites that I like. Um, so, again, I research these issues a lot, and I know it's a recent issue, it's cutting edge, that it says that no matter what age or what stage you are, even 10 minutes of exercise will make a difference to your quality of life. And people like Harvard say you need at least a half an hour a day every day in the week, but you can compress it. So bear that in mind. You really should do something every day. I don't know what you all do. I'd love to take questions and answer them question and answers afterwards and you let me know. So all this is going to take desire, <coughs> determination, and discipline. But it's not so bad when you realize that you can stay healthy and rebuild yourself. So here is my list for external, physical, graceful aging and what we have to be aware of. Number one, the gut. This is the seat of illness, according to my Swiss doctor, and he's a very smart person. A healthy gut will help with everything else. We have over four pounds of bacteria in our gut. Some of it is healthy, some of it is not so healthy. And our diet will inform how healthy it is. Uh, it influences our gut, many aspects of our health, including obesity, mental health, yes, cancer even, and overall wellness. I recommend or I suggest what I do is take a probiotic. I use one that they've done the research on. It's called VSL-3. Anybody who wants to know more can email me, take a card, and I, I do answer personal emails. Um, we don't know what bacteria are in our gut. So something like VSL-3 has so many more strains than the average probiotic that you're covering a lot of bases. Um, so, a gut, a, a, a probiotic, very important to look after your gut. Number two, hydration. As we age, we lose awareness of thirst, and therefore, many of the older people around are suffering hydration, from hydration. The adult human body is over 60% water. Our brain and hearts are 73% water, more or less and it's in ourselves, two-thirds of it. Skin is 60%, approximately. <clears throat> so here are three good reasons to pay attention to hydration. Number one, if you're not hydrated, that can cause your arterial system to fail. And that's a serious one. Number two, those cartilage in between our spinal bones without water can shrink and therefore we will get shorter as our feet get longer, I've noticed. <laughs> uh, and three, the inner thirst can cause fainting. It's a fairly common condition, and that, of course, means that you fall. So hydration is very important. Pure water as healthy and pure and good, and with a pH balance of about seven, which is more alkaline. Three, breath and breathing. Babies do it perfectly. Have you noticed? They sit on their little butt cheeks and they can, and the organs are not compressed and they have perfect posture and they can just let go. As we get older and go through life and rush and are stressed, we breathe. We probably use one third of our lungs. We should be drinking, uh, drink, uh, excuse me, using all of our lungs and do diaphragmatic breathing. As a singer, I know this. Um, there are many exercises that you can do. You can look them up online. But basically, 
you want your diaphragm to go down, and you want the exhale to be longer than the inhale. And you really can do so much. It even helps with sleeping if you spend about four minutes just doing that if you can't sleep. It will also strengthen your core and improve your posture. <clears throat> Four, power up your metabolism. The resting metabolism slows as we age. We lose muscle, and therefore we gain a fat. The metabolism is our engine. And I've already mentioned this. Our batteries, we, have, we are a battery that has to self-charge. Uh, there is a book by Liz Applegate. I didn't have time to put it on the list, and I haven't totally researched it. But for people who can't get to the gym and don't want to get to the gym, it's called Balance Your Body Beautiful. It means, Paula, I will tell you about that later if you want to have to write it down. Have a private meeting with me. Um, so I would recommend about these balls are wonderful exercise balls. Um, um, so I. See, see how that works out. Five, sleep. As we age, we lose, according to Dr. Uh, Craig Heller at Stanford, who's an expert on sleep, 28 minutes a decade, approximately, from the time that we're babies as we go forward. So what is considered the healthy amount of sleep is nothing less than six and a half, and nothing really more than eight. At either end, apparently, it reduces longevity. That is the research that he has come up with. Now, I happen to have sleep problems. Um, and when I don't exercise, I even more on tense and so forth. My practice includes meditation. Uh, my best days, it's twice a day, and doing some yoga and exercise. When I don't do those things, I don't sleep so well. So in my arsenal of um, I like melatonin, one gram uh, of the sublingual or the oral. I just found one at the health food store here. They didn't have the sublingual, so I got the oral, and I, it's really quite good. Um, I like various herbal remedies like uh, passion flower, passiflora. Um, Satya Avina is a very good one. You have to sort of experiment. There's an Indian one called ashwagandha. It's very good for cancer patients, apparently, also. You spell that like it sounds, ashwagandha. And you can find it in the drugstore, um, <coughs> good health food store. But I, I find also that exercise, meditation, uh, and or yoga, kangi, and uh, stretching helps me so that I can sleep better. I often wake up in the middle of the night. I don't know, do any of you have sleep issues? Um, so we can talk about that later if we have time. Six, periodontal health, teeth, really important. Even the general medical community says, see your doctor or see your cardiologist. And why they say that is that when you have things like root canals or periodontal disease, the host of bacteria in the mouth, there's more almost than in your gut. And that sometimes can get into your bloodstream and it can cause real problems. So it's very important to keep your teeth clean and to get one of those water things and put some stuff in it and just get all the food out uh, and brush and clean your teeth very, very well, especially as we age. We need our teeth to chew and we need our teeth not to be afraid to smile and show who we are as seniors. Seven and eight. Sounds like pick up sticks, doesn't it? Um, diet and exercise. So much has been said about it, I really don't have much to say, except I love the writing of uh, Michael Pollan, who wrote the, um, the omniscious on, on the war, I think. Anyway, what he says, I agree with. There are two things I'm going to quote. One is, eat real food, mostly plants, not too much. He also says, if it's a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, don't. <laughs> I would add that sugar is toxic. It is proven to be poisonous. It is proven to throw off the metabolism. Having said that, I love, I have wine. I love my red wine. So uh, probably, I, I don't drink every day. I just say moderation. 
moderation in all things. Enjoy your life. I mean, we're not here to be punished all the time. Um, I also would say eat nutrient-dense foods and don't boil your broccoli till it's just finished, <coughs> like steaming food. I, to me, it's important to spend the money as much as you can on organic food, local food, um, a lot of greens, full of plant chemicals, phytochemicals, so good for us. Um, but also remember that fruits and fish are very often frozen at harvest, so they have retained most of their nutrients. And if you make smoothies, you know, get frozen raspberries or frozen blueberries and take them out the night before and throw those into your smoothies because the organic fresh blueberries can be very, very expensive, for example. Um, and do keep the omega-3s, the essential fatty acids, very, very important to strengthen the immune system. That's flax oil, fish oil, make sure the mercury has been strained out of the fish oil if that's what you get. I don't like killing all those krill, so I stick with flax oil, and that works for me. Um, uh, seek to maintain a correct alkaline balance. This is a very lengthy subject. I'm not going to get into it, but uh, we seek alkalinity. There is a very tight balance between acidity and alkalinity in the body. What I learned in Switzerland is that acidity is or to lead you into illness. Um, where are we here? So with exercise, we are wired for touch as humans. We are wired for movement. So find out what works for you and do it. Try and get a discipline, a program together if you don't have it already. Number nine, incorporate a mental, spiritual practice in your daily life, whether it's a form of breathing, Mindfulness comes through yoga, which is a combination, I think, of both stretching, exercise, and meditation. Um, and today we know that this world requires stress reduction, so I, to me that's a very important thing. Um, last, but definitely not least, is the fun stuff. Graceful aging, clothes, beauty, grooming. Let me add that I totally approve of plastic surgery if you want to have it and you can afford to do it. Um, and the injections, the Botox, it may be rat poison, but it's meant to be safe uh, for those wrinkles. So um, if it makes you feel good, do it. Um, it's proven not to be dangerous unless you're in the hands of a rank amateur, but um, I'm sure you were smart enough not to do that. Um, what I don't love particularly are the gel or plastic nails. I think they're bad for the nail bed. I've done them for performing, um, and I always feel like a million, and then I look at my nails afterward, and I'm very sorry I've done it, but I may do it again. As a general comment on looks and how you present yourself to the world at a certain age, I would say less is more. And um, that means lower heels, I think, if you wear heels. Uh, the skirts should probably not be too short. Uh, less arm showing, unless you don't mind and you're kind of toned. Um, and very, very important to update your makeup and to think about using makeup. What I recommend, because I give these talks um, at oh, retirement communities, in fact, um, a few months ago, I did one uh, a little bit farther north than where I live, and it was a bunch of women, and um, one woman raised her hand, and I said, what is it? She said, well, men don't look at me anymore. And I said, well, would you like them to? Um, she said, well, yeah, people, I, you know, I was always noticed. And I said, well, now, what do you think about your posture? You know, gravity tends to pull us forward, and um, I think maybe you could use some improvement with that. When you stand up straight and you show me that you have self-esteem about who you are, you will be noticed, definitely. My other tips for those ladies and for all ladies, including myself, is that you need to define your eyebrows. As we get older, we either lose our eyebrow hairs or they get whiter. 
Um, or they, yeah, okay, so we lose our eyebrows. What I recommend is dyeing what you have and filling in with an eyebrow pencil or getting tattooed. There are good people who do it. Either semi, I see some smiles, so I'm wondering if maybe one or two of you have done that already. I'm considering it myself. Some semi permanent or permanent. Permanent lasts for about a year, I think, but I'd like to find out about that. Um, you need definition, obviously. You just fade away if you don't have eyebrows. One woman was very, very sweet. She was actually blind at this talk. And she said, well, I'd like to do something about my makeup. And I thought that was sweet. She's married, and, uh, but clearly she was aware, even though she was blind. And I said, well, would you mind? I have some makeup with me. I'd like to try putting some blusher on you. And, um, and we can all say in the audience what we think of it. So she's very pretty, and I put a little blusher on it. Ah, just brought her to life, and everybody noticed that and said that, not just being nice, it really did. So afterwards, she said, I'm going up to show my husband, and what is that makeup? Could I get some? What's the color? She was very, very interested. So, so I think makeup is wonderful. I love it. What I recommend, if you want to update your look or find out what suits you, if you haven't really paid attention to it that much, next time you're in New York, go to Saks, go to Bloomingdale's, find a makeup that you think you might like, Laura Mercier, uh, I think Chanel's a little expensive, or Dior, Saint Laurent, whatever it is, there are tons of wonderful makeups. Find a makeup artist and start asking questions and ask if they would try some things on you. You can get a full makeup, they don't charge you, they hope you're going to buy products. You don't have to buy products. You might end up, just to be nice, buying a lipstick or shoving five bucks <coughs> in their pocket. But that's what I would do to keep your look current. Um, I, I sometimes in London I see these people in England, women in Scotland where I live. You know, they're still wearing that damn blue eyeshadow from the sixties, and you don't want to say anything. But you know, it really looks dated. So those would those would be my um, my tips. Um, I'd like to add that I believe in using uh, bioidentical hormones. I have been using them since three days after I had cancer. I had my cancer operation. My doctor came in and I used that funny line, I'm not a vestigian and I've got a gun. And so, <laughs> so I, his assistant came in the next day and said, Dr. Schwartz said that I'm supposed to give you hormones. I said, yes, yes you are. Uh, they gave me what's called Vagifem, which is an intravaginal preparation. Um, which is only absorbed by 1% in the body. Um, I have checked this with doctors in Europe, here, gynecologists in Florida, in New York. They say, don't stop taking the hormones. My doctor in New York said that he has a 90-year-old woman. Two of her boyfriends have died off. She likes having sex, and she, she, she continues to take the hormones. Uh, including testosterone, just to make her feel a little sort of edgy. So, um, so far, they haven't hurt me. But I recommend bio-identical. That means you go to a compounding pharmacy and you, you have to have your blood tested. And it's not right, now there's a window. If you, you know, if you haven't done anything for 20 years or so, that may not be the solution for you. So, any of these recommendations that I'm making, you should check with your physician, whoever that person is. So grooming is very important. And um, I would like to thank you for coming. And I will leave you with this very funny thing that Liz Taylor said years ago. Um, I'll preface it by saying that there is a radio show in the United Kingdom called Desert Island Discs. And they interview celebrities, and that celebrity comes in with six of their favorite musical pieces and either all or part of it is played. The idea is that you're going to be sent to a desert island, the food will be there, the water will be there, and you get to take two things with you. Um, the books already have gone, and Liz Taylor 
said that she would take a magnifying mirror and a pair of tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally agree. So thank you very much for coming. You've been a very responsive audience. <laughs> Are there any questions, or I'd love to hear what you all have to say about your lives and what you do. Anybody have a question you would like to? Paula. I have a question. If you're supposed to have six and a half and not more than eight and a half hours sleep, yeah. right? what happens if you sleep four hours and get up four hours and then get another four hours? Well, that's a very, very good question. That's important because remember, before electricity, <coughs> um, <laughs> there was 11 or 12 hours that people had to in the, the darkness. So what there was, was the first sleep and the second sleep. And that's not even that old. That maybe goes back 100 years or maybe more. I haven't really researched it, but I've read a certain amount about it. And when people woke up, they would get up and do something. Oh, yeah. And um, it's even thought that the oral tradition came out of that, they would tell each other stories, and then they would go back to bed. So, um, we, you know, I'm afraid that wonderful full eight, nine, ten hour sleep of the teenager is gone. We're going, we have to struggle for it. But I don't think it's detrimental, although I keep reading that we live in a sleep-deprived country. Well, maybe that's the other thing. What? Being sleep-deprived? Yeah. I don't know, but um, sometimes I feel it. Any other questions? Uh, Lee. Going back to the sleeping method, if you, when you do wake up, you go after three hours. Yeah. Like How long do you let yourself toss, toss and turn? Well, they you say, it, or they say, they say, I mean, there, there are rules about sleep. Um, and I've put uh, um, on my, uh, that's the healthy aging. If you go to great courses, there's a wonderful, do you know that website that does these wonderful courses that you can take, uh, given by college professors. They're very often on sale. Um, there's one on sleep. But, but what they say is that we should prepare our rooms in a certain way. Number one, they should only be for sleep or sex. Number two, we shouldn't really read in bed unless it's so boring that it will be guaranteed to put you right to sleep. Um, number three, you should get rid of dials and, you know, th these, these things <clears throat> put off a signal and light. And you should try and get rid of all of that on your telephone, on your iPhone, whatever it is, on your TV set if you have one in the bed bedroom. Make sure that it's totally blacked out. I find that as I am of a certain age, I will wake up and I am cold or colder, and I find that getting a blanket and putting it on the bed for my so-called second sleep works wonders. My body is unable now, the furnace isn't as good as it used to be, so I have to warm myself up to get back into that sleep mode, and that helps me. And there's also an herb that I take, and I'll tell you how to get it. I'll spell it for you if you want to call me. But it's schisandra. It's a Chinese herb uh, with all these acids for sleep, I suppose, or doing snoring. And it works very well, and you can take it when you wake up, and it's not detrimental. And it puts me in a very sort of calm place. Um, I think that you can find it on a website. I see you writing madly, Infinici, I-N-F-I-N-I-C-H-I. Um, unfortunately, they may have changed the name from Cassandra to something else because they renamed everything. But I, mean, I think we have to work at it. But the yoga that you're starting to do is going to help you. Has, has it at all, do you think, in the past? Well, you've got a lot on your mind of selling a house, and that's, that's very stressful and other things. But um, I think it's something that we all have to really continue to work on because without sleep, it hurts the heart. It, it hurts all the brain cells, cognizant. It's dangerous to drive if you're tired. So um, I think we all really have to try hard to sleep better. Okay, could I just add one thing? Um, we've had a person here a couple of times talking about light, and you mentioned no dials, no computer lights, etc. Yes. But also the kinds of lighting you have in your bedroom, according to a lot of 
current thinking should be incandescent and not any of those energy saving light bulbs. Oh, right. Okay. Absolutely not after three or four in the afternoon, not in the living areas of your house. Okay. In the morning, maybe. But this has been shown now to affect your immune system, to certainly affect sleeping, to affect the production of melatonin, etc. Oh, right. Well, that's very, very good. So I went to Herrick's and bought, you know, every Thank single you. light bulb. I'm trying to remember that. I mean, more about it. Also, we have melatonin, it's a natural hormone, but it does, as we age, it lessens in our body, so taking it, I don't think there's side effects from hormone anyway. But see, the other just thing I wanted to mention was that sometime in the last year or so, you know, the talking about how much exercise for how long and the benefits of exercise. Yes. Well, it was sometime in the last year, year and a half in the Science Times, there was a study that showed definitively that walking twice a day for 20 minutes actually had a slightly better effect on blood pressure. Okay. That was it, blood but pressure. But walking once a day for Right, in other words, or? so like, you know, taking exercise in chunks is, is definitely the way to go if you don't have long periods of time, I think. I mean, as you said, you know, a short walk. But if you can do a couple well, of short walking walks. walking is considered the overall view of one thing that you do, walking, do it. And then occasionally if you can fast walk, that's going to get your heart rate up, which you want to do. Um, and uh, I, I walk every day. I, I love walking. Yes. One of the things to add about sleeping in saying chunks of exercise is yeah. also chunks of sleeping. You can also take a nap. And yes. I feel okay about taking a nap. Oh, yeah. Some sleep. If I could, I would. And, yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes that's, you know, where you need to fit in that time of day. Um, and also, you said, you know, having a lot on your mind, you can get up to go and journal and write it all out to get it off your mind. Know that, okay, it's there. Now I don't have to think about Yes, that's a very it's, good suggestion. It's a, it's a helpful thing when you're crossing the turn and you know, I find when I'm in bed, I immediately, that's when all the thoughts come. And I think of every single thing I need to be doing. And if I can't sleep, I'll get up and put it on paper. But Betsy, don't you think reading is a good thing to do in bed? Well, well, I do. I mean, last uh, last night actually, I had a mystery um, that I was there was that much left, uh -huh. and I had to find out who'd done it. So mm -hmm. when I woke up, um, and I occasionally, not all the time, get something to warm my tummy, and I had a light dinner, so I heated up some coconut milk and had you know a little bit. Not the best thing to do, but it does relax one. And I finished the book. So yeah, I think we, for me, um, yes. Do you have any thoughts about um, taking probiotics? Oh, I have lots of thoughts oh, about I mentioned them. Um, yes, they're essential to keep the gut bacteria healthy okay. and get rid of the baddies. Uh, we have four, over four pounds of gut bacteria. Most of it is good and trying to get rid of the bad stuff, but some of it's not so good. So find a good probiotic. I was saying that I take DSL-3, which I like and was recommended by my physician in New York because it has more strains than any of the other ones. I don't know what's in my gut. I might as well throw everything at it. And so far, uh, no bad effects. Yeah. Uh, I just want to add to you your uh, talk about exercise. My father just passed away at the age of 100, and he played golf um, at least three times a week, and he walked every single day, and when he played golf, he played 18 holes of golf until the week before he died. Oh, and good. Back. And wow. he Bless had him. Animals, and he played golf, I can say, a week before he died, and he was totally with it, alert, and died in sleep at the age of over that's good. Yeah. Well, that's what we all want. That's what we all want. Good for him. That's a wonderful story. Thank you for telling us. Is he from Southampton? No, Huntington. Huntington? All the golf buddies, and we didn't have a funeral. We had a party. And we had 100 golf balls lined up. Oh. And everybody hit golf balls into the water. Oh, that's lovely. That's really a nice story. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. Well, on the strength of that, I thank you again very much for coming. Thank you. I have some books if anybody wants to buy one. The library has copies of But the other thing I would mention is that in November, that's in December 2nd, isn't it? Oh, it's in December 2nd. Okay, let me look it up. I forgot to mention it. Um, um, 